In the path of life, you often hit a crossroad. One way is narrow and hard to cross through. The other one is broad with easy access, with a gate that's wide, mass beauty where evil hides, leads to destruction, and many go through it. Lack of self-control to resist its beauty. The same beauty that puts you on your knees and makes you weary, so you pray. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You've had enough. Enough self-pity, enough worry, enough fear. Enough feeling like you'll never be near your destination. Away with sadness, away with frustration, with tears, with disbelief in the cost of burden all these years. You have to be strong. You have to take charge. Believe. I'll take hold of the promise given to me that I'll never be forsaken. Not one minute, not one scene of my life will go unfinished. Moving forward towards the prize, heaven bound given to me long ago when I opened up my soul for the Lord to take control. Regardless of what's happened, I have plans, big plans, plans to prosper, plans for hope, plans for a future, plans for more. But not more of the world, but more of Him and less of me. Self control is what I need. What is self? This self control I seek, the awesome gift God's Holy Spirit gives. Have you been in situations before where at the last minute you had to make a good decision on your own, but didn't? Self-control. They say it's a quality that allows you to stop yourself from doing things you want to do, but that are not in your best interest to do. Thoughts? Can you think of one? When you were placed in a situation and you lost it all? Looking back, reminiscing, if I should have, if I could have, if I just would have. Stop to think. If I knew it would turn out this way, I would have never blinked for that one second it took to lose control and lose myself in it. Lose myself in it. Lose myself in it. It. That pride. It. That big fat lie. The selfishness. The haughtiness. The I'm too good to ask for help. Righteousness. Self-sufficient. Self-maintained. But the flesh. Mm. The desires of the flesh. I have control, you say. Just put me one more double serve my way. I'm good, I'm good, you say. Good? Have you been? Are you? Are you good when you're alone with that beautiful girl you met a few months ago after you promised to respect her more, to protect her soul from the lure of the flesh, the sweet embrace of filthiness? I have control. I have control, you say. We're just kissing, it's okay. No harm done, you see. I have control over me. I'll stay away, but you don't. In a few days, some of you are back for more. A few more drinks, a few more holes of her body, especially that shoulder area. Oh yeah, that's where it begins. With the sensual touching of your fingertips, you know the rest. It is in heartbreak. You felt the test. Maybe this is not the lack of control where you struggle, but in the 80 hours you put in at work to make a dollar, to please your peers, to satisfy those relatives so near, neglecting your friends, neglecting your life, neglecting the work of God that brings you light. So you cry. Your control is not there. Balance is not there. For your identity lies elsewhere, on that paycheck, on that wall, the plaque that says it all. Top performer of the year. I did it, I did it, but why is my spirit not still? Still? Getting angry still, getting annoyed, still judging all those who don't see your point of view. Maybe you should take one hard look at you. The good news is that God has your back, ready to offer you the control you lack, the control you need to keep yourself away from sin, idolatry. What does the word say? Jesus tells us to practice self-control, to deny ourselves by sacrificing our own cross with steadfastness and submission, loss to self, but not submission to the flesh, but submission to him. Self-control in what we say, do, and crave, in our words, in our actions, and in our lives. Do not be people of, un of unclean lips who use their tongues to lie, steal, gossip, backbite, and cheat. Restrain yourself from all deceit. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives with integrity, with wisdom and godly vice. Discipline yourself from becoming angry. So much of it can lead to murder, abuse, and fits of rage. Is that how God's society behaves? When we get mad and fly off the handle, it would always be a bad lending. Take control of your tempers. It would destroy your relationships. Husband and wives divorce, while close friends become hated enemies. So be slow to lose your cool. And if you don't, don't be.
be a fool. If you do, don't be a fool. Read your record at the real enemy on your footstool. One more thing. Please live within your means. Forget the world and all its schemes. Who says you must have this and that to be legit? I mean, look at our economy. Get an extra job just to pay the bills. But going on routine spills at the clubs and at the bars, ensnared by the riches of the world's claws. So stop to think. Be still and be reflective. Do not crave the world's delicacies, for its food is deceptive. Instead, satisfy your desires in the Lord. He loves you and wants you to have more, less of the world and more of Him. The goodness of His Spirit and His gentleness, the richness of His kingdom and His truthfulness. Where peace lies, after the journey of destruction, your experience, where you choose the other way. Now you can choose the path that's right. Jesus, the only way, the truth, and the life.